Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're just priming some parts for the duster. Um, basically just using up some old epoxy that I had. Um, I want to get these parts uh, coated so I don't they don't sit there and rust because it's going to be a while before I put them in. But uh, let me show you what uh, we're working on here. Got these parts hanging up on this old uh, scaffolding stuff here. Um, there's uh, the transmission cross member. There's the K-frame for the 74 and the K-frame for the 70. So we're actually working on the drag car today. Uh, the trunk, um, I don't know if you saw in a previous video, I was trying this little guy out, but uh, here we are gonna go ahead and prime it. Um, so what you do is basically just back tape it. So with the trunk open, um, you just stick the tape to the back of the panel and all the way around the perimeter and then close it shut. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the paper, excuse me, drag the plastic over the top, stick it down and then uh, stick it down to the perimeter. And then with my razor blade, just carefully cut out the plastic. That way the rest of the car is covered and you just basically peel off the area that you want to paint. So once I get that bagged then uh, and wrapped up, then I'll wipe it down with some cleaners and uh, mix up my primer and go to town. I had these uh, dipped at a local dipping shop. Um, I don't know how well they turned out. I mean, I don't feel anything, it's just discolored. So I don't know, but uh, it's gonna be good enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it, put some uh, epoxy primer all over it. Um, whatever I can't get into here, I'm gonna get a can of uh, cavity wax spray. That's the kind of stuff that they use on the newfangled cars. Basically it's a wand that shoots in like 360 degrees on the end of a, a long straw. So you feed it down there and spray, and it sprays all the way around as you pull it through, uh, you know, all the cavities and stuff. So once I get this primed and painted, then I'll spray it with cavity wax to catch any areas that uh, couldn't get with the spray gun. Got everything covered up because that I don't want primer on because this stuff will get everywhere. Oh shoot, I gotta cover my toolbox because I'm gonna be painting right there and I don't want that all oversprayed. You can use just regular plastic for this kind of stuff. Uh, from the uh, from the home improvement stores, you know, your regular painting plastic. Uh, but this is actually from an auto body supply store. This, uh, if you know, if this is just a hobby, this one box will probably last you a lifetime. Um, and we went through it in the shops uh, quite regularly, obviously, because we're bagging every car that goes through. But 350 feet, 16 feet wide, so you can cover up a pickup truck or whatever with it. And, you know, if you want, your wife wants you to, you know, paint the baby room, you can use it for that too. <laughs> Uh, it is uh, directional. It says uh, paint this side, so you want to make sure that that's up. It has to do with uh, the overspray sticking to it. It'll stick to this, where the other side it won't so much. So yeah, this is that's it for as far as uh, those tips I can share with you. Uh, let's look at the primer we're going to use. Uh, so I got the uh, the primer for the Mustang. We're going to go with a full Omni package. Um, that's the epoxy primer for the Mustang. This is my Limco. This is good stuff too, um, but this is several years old. I didn't want to use this on uh, the Mustang, so we're going to shake it up on the Harbor Freight paint shaker, mix it up, and spray it down. That's what I did with the uh, inside the doors and this trunk lid for the 70. Did this last year, I think, but uh, keep them protected. These actually had uh, dipped as well. Um, I actually haven't primed the outside panels yet. Uh, I was going to do some metal work first before I primed it, but I uh, haven't just haven't touched it. It's been here for at least a year or more, and uh, it's hardly really any flash rust to speak of, but it's been indoors, so I think your mileage may vary depending on your climate. This is actually pretty good stuff. Um, I like the BASF line. I was certified painter with BASF when I worked in the body shops, which really doesn't mean anything. You just went through their, uh, you know, few hour class or two day class or whatever it was. But uh, Limco is their budget line. Um, it's pretty decent stuff and it's affordable. Um, the closest uh, BASF uh, retailer reseller that uh, to me is like well over an hour away. Um, and so unfortunately, it's just not uh, cost effective to drive or practical to drive, I don't know, an hour and a half or whatever it is to go out there. But uh, Omni is a PPG product, basically their same line, uh, level of line as the Limco, but made by PPG, Pittsburgh Paint Group. 
And uh, so this should be good stuff too. I actually painted my, uh, or primed my uh, 66 Falcon with this stuff and it worked pretty good. Um, yeah, let me get my toolbox wrapped up, get that taped down, cut out, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, and once you got the uh, plastic all torn off, you wanna just kinda of go around the edge and make sure that you don't have any plastic or tape on the surface area where you actually wanna put material. So I just go all the way around the edge Kind of tuck it a little bit if I need to. If something's sticking up, you can always just grab another piece of tape and tape it down. Tape it down flat so it doesn't fold up on you like that. You want to make sure you get this edge too. You want to make get material on there. See, like this right here, you don't want that getting on top. You want to make sure it's underneath, stuck down. Like I said, you could put another piece of tape right there if you wanted to hold it down a little better. It keeps folding over the top of itself, so I'll probably put some tape to hold that down too. Just kind of showing you here how to do this with the, the holding the camera here. Sometimes the plastic will just stick to itself. more spots but uh I can't bring for that got my little setup here i like uh, to have some paper down catch any drips so it doesn't get all over my workbench also kind of gives it a nice clean area to work got my primer gun got my primers an extra piece of tape in case i need to tape up some uh, stray plastic that's flying around got my cleaning kit ready i uh, got my gloves i uh, got my uh, little paint suit to keep over spray off of me and uh, I got my mask sitting in the house, so I gotta go grab that. Uh, first, before I actually start spraying, I'm gonna go over this K-frame here, just clean off all this old, this gunk that's in here. But this one right here, like this stuff right here is actually flaking off. So I don't know what all this is, just some gunk that's left over. But uh, I'm just gonna give it a once over with a red scotch spray, go over all the surfaces. Um, and then hit it with uh, just a cleaner and degreaser and start to start spraying it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit these with epoxy primer and then just paint them with a rattle can black spray bomb. Epoxy coating will be good to keep them protected for a long, long time. And then just some black because rattle can because the uh, a quarter base coat and then some clear coat or even just a single stage, which is what you would normally use. Um, it's just kind of cost prohibitive right now. Perfect compromise of quality and affordability. So there's my uh, Harbor Freight gun that I probably had for, oh gosh, do I dare say? <laughs> 20 plus years, 25 years maybe? I don't know, maybe longer. Anyway. I'm getting old. All right, let's get busy. Just got done priming. Got my uh, booth fan blowing out. <laughs> it's actually doing a really good job. That was all primed. Got my K-frames primed. Ready for paint. Well, once it dries, it's prepped. Okay, remember, and just in case, which I figured I would have a little extra paint in the gun, I had a brand new raw steel oil pan for the 351 Windsor. So, here well, while I'm at it, I will put some paint on it, or primer on it. I use uh, this 3M, this actually works really well. Uh, it's really easy to clean. I've actually used that tip over and over, they're disposable, so if for some reason you need a new one, you can just switch it out. It makes it super easy to clean. I mix in this cup here, and then when I'm done, I actually clean out the cup. I reuse it over and over and over. This is these are the older style. The newer one actually has the measurements built into it, so you can uh, pour it out right into this cup instead of having to transfer it, which I wish I had that, but these are already paid for. I got a whole package of them, so we're good to go. That's it for tonight. 
And tomorrow I'll uh, unbag everything and then get to sanding on the Mustang because that is the priority. I just wanted to get these done. Well, not really that so much, but I uh, just want to get the trunk lid spread so it's not bare steel. And I wanted to get those done so that way I can kind of put them on the shelf and not have to worry about them getting all turning all brown. All right, time to make these black. It's the next morning. Everything seems to be dry enough. Semi-gloss black. Here's the, uh, the number here. I have a, a little bit left of a, a full gloss, but I don't know if I have enough to cover everything. And I think the semi-gloss will actually look a little bit better because, um, you know, with all the welding slag, I mean, you don't want to highlight all that stuff. But uh, I also have some satin black, but I think the uh, semi-gloss will be just right for this. All right, just about used up the whole can for two key frames and transmission cross member. I don't know what I did with the other transmission cross member, otherwise I would have painted it too. It's probably in a box somewhere. So anyway, ready to go back in the car. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.